Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be a continuation in my Mars to Earth series that I'm doing. And this series is focusing on the uh, fuel planning aspect of the flight. We're trying to get our fuel planning so precise that we will go from Mars back to Earth and have a basically no Delta V left when we get back there. And the purpose of that is uh, just to just to just to have the accuracy. You know, it's it's fun. It's I guess it's okay to just load up the vessel with as much fuel as you can carry, and then do your flight. And then when you show up at your destination, you've got all this fuel left over. That's always okay. But um, w when you want to plan missions, especially when you don't know if you're going to have the fuel to get from point A to point B, then it's really fun to uh, it's it's fun and and it's necessary to do a bit of fuel planning. And the only way that you can know that your fuel planning is spot on is to maybe try out some missions like this where you say that you're going to give yourself exactly enough fuel to make the trip and no more. So if you arrive at your destination and you have, you know, zero meters per second left or, you know, that's not quite reasonable, but, you know, 10 meters or 20 meters or 30 meters per second left, something like that. If you can do that, then you know that your fuel planning skills are pretty awesome. So that's what we're trying to do here. I'm not saying that we're going to be successful at it, but we're trying. So let's uh, go ahead and jump into the flight and continue. We are here at the uh, point where we're trying to set up our second mid-course correction. Kind of messed it up uh, in, the, in the last video. Uh, we didn't burn anything, so we didn't use any fuel. But I think I messed up the planning of the, of the mid-course correction a little bit. So I'm going to try it again here. So let's go back to uh, the D Delta V here. And we want target intercept. And then we're going to target Earth, because that's where we're going. And we want to put in the MJD, first and foremost, of the date that we plan to arrive. And uh, for as many times as I've typed that in already, I still don't remember it. Transact, the, tr the plan that we had in Transact said that we would arrive around 58435. So we need to know that number. And apparently there's no way to store that in uh, IMFD, so it's a good idea in the future, I'll have to remember to do this, to uh, make note after we get up into orbit of what the what the uh, MJD is going to be, because especially if you save your mission and come back to it later and you don't have the Transex plan anymore, then you don't know what your MJD, uh, what your arrival MJD is going to be. So 58435.9 uh, And we're done with Transex. So and now we, this says that it would cost us 70 Delta V, but if we play with the MJD a little bit back and forth, we might be able to bring that down a little bit. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, go to a 1X setting. So that's not helping, and that's not helping. So right there is good as it as, is eh, as good as it's going to get. Now if we page over and go to the burn vector screen, this is what I wanted to see. Because then what I was doing before was I would just put that number in to the delta velocity program. And you can see that doing it that way is completely incorrect because this number is not just simply uh, prograde 70. It's a combination of three different uh, three different velocities. In fact, and the, and the prograde is the least of them. And not only is it the least of them, but it's minus and not positive. So that's what I thought the problem was, and it was. So now let me bring up... I keep going to select because I keep thinking I'm going to a different MFD. I kind of forget that IMFD is like one MFD to rule them all. So we'll go to the course program here. And now we'll... Uh, uh, of course, we have to unshare the sides. That side's already unshared. So we have to unshare this side. I'm still learning this stuff. It's a little confusing to me at times. Now, of course, now we can go to the Delta V program. So now we want to put in what we saw in the burn vector. But why is it different? Oh my god. All this just suddenly changed. I think I remember Dimitri telling me that that could happen in some cases, so I should have wrote those numbers down. 
that's that's annoying okay so we might have to do this like a third time that's okay it only takes a second but yeah apparently okay i think actually maybe if we leave the delta v screen now if we look at the burn vector okay yeah now we have now we have what we need so actually let me write these down see these aren't shared but there's apparently some bug in, in IMFD where these two programs think they're shared. So let's just write that down. Negative 4. We don't care about that 100th decimal point. Negative 13.7 and 69. Okay. Now bring up the delta velocity program over here. And we can leave that program. Bring up map. And we can share the other side now. And now that gives us our starting point. So delta V set to negative 4 for this one. And the plane change is negative 13.7. And the DVI inward outward was 69.1. Okay, now let's look at our plan on this side. That's still pretty far off. You know, I wonder if these are backwards. Uh, seems to me like you might have told me that. Let me try something real quick. Let me set the DVI to negative 69.1. And set the plane change to 13.7. And set the forward to four okay so no that's not the case all right so negative four negative 13.7 for the plane change and 69.1 for the dvi and i guess it just must be timing difference or something all right let's uh not do that Let's go to previous and set the time to do the maneuver to 240, so four minutes out. And let's play with our variables a little bit until we can bring that PEA down a bit more. I guess the difference is just that the target intercept program isn't as accurate as map MFD or uh, map. So let's start with the uh, prograde. Actually, let's not. Let's start with the one that has the most velocity, which is the inward outward. Do an adjustment to 10. And that's helping. It's raising our cost, but it's helping. Okay, that puts us uh, below the surface, which I think probably for now is still good. You do reach a point where you don't want to do that trick anymore because you're so close to the planet that you want to be more you, that map mfd will be interplanetary's map program will be more accurate so you don't need to do that but we'll go ahead and burn this so page over burn vector again we'll rotate manually to that to get that uh, crosshair centered because uh we, we we can do it more efficiently so a bit of time warp to get that over there Okay, it's pretty well centered. Let's go ahead and auto burn. It'll do just a bit of an adjustment there to get everything nice and centered. And once that's done, we will uh, check our burn time calculator because we want to know um, we want to know what this maneuver cost us. I mean, we know for here it's 82.35, but we want to see specifically how much delta v we've got left over. Go ahead and warp time forward. Get through this. Okay, that's the burn. Let's turn off the plan, and it still shows that we're the same that we were before, so we don't need to do any additional translation. Bring up burn time calculator, and we need to check the uh, kg of the RCS. It's really kind of annoying that you have to do this constantly, but 
again, I really hope they're, I, I sent a message to Enjo, and I was kind of telling him, you know, how often I update that. So I was like, you know, can you put an option on page two to basically include the RCS in that calculation? And, and it can be defaulted to off because most people probably don't use it, but just hide it away somewhere on page two for my sake. And I haven't got a reply back from him yet, and I don't know if he's wanting to do that or not, but it would be really nice. Okay, so we have 123.799 left. Let's go to our flight log. So DV after the mid-course correction. 123.799. Yeah, 799. So that cost us a total of 82.789. That's we, we know that's about right. So let's continue going forward to the uh, third mid-course correction, uh, if we have one, which I think we will. Let's bring the map program back up, and we'll bring orbit MFD up on this side so we can see where we are. And we're now about a m little over a month away from Earth. Let's uh, press F9. Take a look outside, see where Earth is at. There you can see it pretty well. The Earth-Moon system. So we're not very far out. We may not actually need another mid-course correction. We might be able to go forward all the way until until we're within Earth's uh, weak SOI, in which case we can then set our PEA to about 60, uh, 65 kilometers, and, it, and this will be fairly accurate at that point. So let's hope we can do that. Warping time forward, watching the uh, PEA, and kind of watching the MJD at this point, so we know how close we are. Also, let me reference Earth now. That'll give us a better idea. Okay. That, that just gives me a better idea how close I am so I don't accidentally over overdo the time warp. Okay, watching the PA, it's kind of going out. Let's, let's kind of watch that wobble out and in, out and in. Okay, we're only, let me think, 30 days out now, I believe. Let me do, let me just check the MJD one more time, because I'm too stupid to write it down. Yeah, 435, so we are less than 20 days out. No idea why I brought that up. Okay, go forward. Okay, we don't want a PEA that's that far below the surface, so actually even before we get into the weak SOI of Earth, we're going to do a little bit of a correction here uh, because that's, you know, that's a difference of 5,000 kilometers. We want it to be closer to the surface. Translation. Rotation. Let's actually carefully, not using a lot of RCS, rotate so that we're prograde to Earth, which I don't have on the HUD, so I don't even know where that's at. Now, that's on the HUD. Okay, now we're prograde to Earth. Now, our inclination to Earth is 37 degrees, so that's going to be a prograde, yeah, prograde orbit. So that means we would want to leave if we translate out this way, then we should bring our PEA closer to the surface. Translation. So just a little bit of test translation, and then we'll watch the PEA here in Interplanetary's map program.
and by doing it out here, it won't cost as much. If I waited till I was really close to Earth to do this, then it would mean that uh, it would cost more. So you can kind of consider this a third big course correction if you want, but we're just using translation, and I don't, I'm not paying attention to how much we're using, but it's probably just a little bit. So we'll go with uh, we'll go with that uh, about negative 500. Because again, I don't know what's going to happen as I continue to go forward for the next few days. But we'll we'll check things out again when we get in a little bit closer. Just kind of watching that it's trending. This is closer to zero. That's what we want. So now we're just going to warp time forward until we're at least at 0 0.1. Okay, we're 15 days from Earth. Okay, this seems like it's really accurate now, so I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and in, the, in the interest of saving fuel, I'm going to go ahead and push it out closer to the surface. And you heard that buzz sound, that means that the uh, LOX container is now empty and we're now running on internal LOX. So if we wanted to, we could dump 355.2 kg of mass, but it really wouldn't do us any good because our delta V that we have is such a small number that we wouldn't really gain any delta V doing that. That's not what I meant to do. Okay, I'm going to set it there just in case it continues to increase a little bit. It'll increase in our favor. We would like to have a PEA of about 70 kilometers, 65 kilometers, when we actually get back to Earth. So let's uh, now go forward. To 10,000. We've only got 13 days to go. Okay, we're within the 0 0.03. And I think at this point, when you're this close, you can go ahead and set your PEA exactly where you want it, and it will hold. Even w even though Earth has its moon, it will still, I think, rotation hold quite well. Translation. So let's go ahead and set our PEA to, uh, let's set it for 60. That way, if it goes up a little bit more, it's okay. All right, uh, time warp Rotation. forward. Uh, we've only got uh, what, three or four days to go. Yeah, it's continuing to go up a little bit, and that's fine. Passing the moon, apparently. And that's it, we're home. Home, sweet home. Let's get in a little closer. Let's get into about 10,000 seconds out. Right about there. Okay, let's see how we did. Let's bring up burn time calculator. And again, let's put in the RCS that we actually have, which is now 6.8. We've got 120 meters per second remaining. I would say that's that's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good fuel planning. You know, again, we 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 knew that we would have a little bit more left over because when we did the after the injection burn, we had a little bit more than we calculated. But again, you don't necessarily want to have zero, uh, exactly zero, when you get back because you have to uh, you know in the atmosphere you have to do certain maneuvers to get yourself situated. And then you have to do, um, the, the autopilots need a certain amount of RCS when you're coming in for landing. So uh, when, when I say zero, I mean zero, like at landing. Like if, if you land and you have almost like zero or uh, 10 meters per second left, then you're very, very accurate. But even this is very, very, very accurate. So let's uh, look at our flight log real quick. Actually, let's go forward a little bit more. 
Nah, 9,000 seconds, it's close enough. So let's put in this number into our flight log. So when we arrived at Earth, we had 120.035. Okay, so... Uh, Just looking at things over here. All right, that's main. This is mainly for my sake, anyway, not for other people. All right, we are at twenty minutes, so I think we might be able to at least do the atmospheric breaking for the circularization, and then we'll probably call it a part. Just think about things for a second. If there's anything else I need to think about before we do that. Actually, we'll do a quick save at a couple thousand seconds here. And um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end this, this part of the video here, even though we're only at 21 minutes. But uh, when we come back, we'll, we'll do the atmospheric breaking circularization and then we'll set up for you know for some kind of landing back on earth if you like this part of the video hit the like button D don't like it subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed i got a facebook page a fan page if you want to like that facebook fan page you'll you'll be able to keep up with my orbiter activity that way and i also have a faq that a lot of people don't notice if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the description there's a link to that faq so check that out if you're not familiar with it and i will see you in the next video to get from point A to point B, then it's really fun to, uh, it's, it's fun and, and it's necessary to do a bit of fuel planning. And the only way that you can know that your fuel planning is spot on is to maybe try out some missions like this where you say that you're going to give yourself exactly enough fuel to make the trip and no more. So if you arrive at your destination and you have, you know, zero meters per second left or, you know, that's not quite reasonable, but, you know, 10 meters or 20 meters or 30 meters per second left, something like that. If you can do that, then you know that your fuel planning skills are pretty awesome. So that's what we're trying to do here. I'm not saying that we're going to be successful at it, but we're trying. So let's uh, go ahead and jump into the flight and continue. Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be a continuation in my Mars to Earth series that I'm doing. And this series is focusing on the uh, fuel planning aspect of the flight. We're trying to get our fuel planning so precise that we will go from Mars to back to Earth and have basically no Delta V left when we get back there. And the purpose of that is uh, just to just to just to have the accuracy. You know, it's it's fun. It's I guess it's okay to just load up the vessel with as much fuel as you can carry. And then do your flight and then when you show up at your destination you've got all this fuel left over that's always okay but um, w when you want to plan missions especially when you don't know if you're going to have the fuel we are here at the uh, point where we're trying to set up our second mid-course correction kind of messed it up uh, in, the, in the last video uh, we didn't burn anything so we didn't use any fuel but i think i messed up the planning of the of the mid-course correction a little bit so I'm going to try it again here. So let's go back to uh, the D Delta V here. And we want target intercept. And then we're going to target Earth, because that's where we're going. And we want to put in the MJD, first and foremost, of the date that we plan to arrive. And uh, for as many times as I've typed that in already, I still don't remember it. Transe the, tr the plan that we had in Transex said that we would arrive around 58435. So we need to know that number. And apparently there's no way to store that in uh, IMFD. So it's a good idea in the future, I'll have to remember to do this, to uh, make note after we get up into orbit of what the, what the uh, MJD is going to be. Because especially if you save your mission and come back to it later and you don't have the Transex plan anymore, then you don't know what your MJD, uh, what your arrival MJD is going to be. So uh, five eight four three five point nine. 
and we're done with Transax. So and now we, this says that it would cost us 70 Delta V, but if we play with the MJD a little bit back and forth, we might be able to bring that down a little bit. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, go to a 1x setting. So that's not helping, and that's not helping. So right there is as good as it as, is eh, as good as it's going to get. Now if we page over and go to the burn vector screen, this is what I wanted to see. Because then what I was doing before was I would just put that number in to the delta velocity program. And you can see that doing it that way is completely incorrect because this number is not just simply a prograde 70. It's a combination of three different uh, three different velocities. In fact, and the, and the prograde is the least of them.